An independent country since 1947, Pakistan is the inheritor of a long and varied history and rich cultural traditions. Up in the mighty Karakoram Mountains in the north, the Indus River is still young as it cuts its way through some of the most forbidding country on earth. By the time it reaches the plains of Punjab, it has matured, slowing right down to old age as it washes the banks of timeless Sindh before dying in the Arabian Sea. The journey ends, but the flow is eternal. Since the beginning of time, the river has witnessed so much. Its blood-soaked sands have been the playground and burial place of some of the greatest imperialist adventurers, Iranian, Greek, Scythian, Turkish, Mughal, and British. Alexander, Mahmud of Ghazni, Timur, and countless warlords have furiously fought for imperial supremacy over the rugged land of the Indus Valley. Pakistan, the meeting place of many worlds, has not only provided the theater for the ravages of invading armies, it has also been the abode of peace and prosperity for humanity on a very large scale. Ancient cities, some abandoned millennia ago and some still thriving in the modern age, are testimony to the fact that the land of the Indus has provided for many of the world's greatest civilizations. It's not easy to categorize the Pakistanis. They belong to different ethnic groups and different tribes, and they speak an array of different languages. Assuming that they have coped successfully with the culture shock induced in most Westerners by the sheer numbers of people to be seen on the busier streets of any Asian city, the first impression of Pakistanis likely to be gained by visitors to cities like Karachi, Lahore, or Peshawar is of the variety of its inhabitants. Men in turbans with long flowing beards dressed in all kinds of colorful regional attire nudge against clean-shaven men attempting to get to the office, some dressed in suits and ties, but most in the more common salwar kameez, which is a set of long shirt and baggy trousers. Women, too, their faces often veiled, stride confidently through the bazaars. In common with most languages of Europe, nearly all the languages spoken in Pakistan belong to the same great Indo-European language family. These were originally brought to the subcontinent by the Aryan invaders, whose language is preserved in the ancient Sanskrit of the Vedas. Spoken across the vast plains that extend from Pakistan through northern India to Bangladesh, the modern Indo-Aryan languages, produced as a result of a long process of simplification and mixture with now lost local languages, are descended from Sanskrit in the same sort of way as French and Spanish are derived from Latin. The one great force whose effects are felt throughout Pakistan is the Islamic religion in the name of whose ideals the country itself was founded. These effects are most certainly also felt by the tiny religious minorities that constitute about 4% of the population. Islam itself is, of course, far from monolithic. The truth of this is amply demonstrated by the variety to be found in Pakistani Islam, stemming not only from recent developments, but also from the earliest period of Islamic history. Soon after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, a major split arose between the followers of his son-in-law Ali. While the Shia community holds that Ali and his descendants are the divinely ordained successors to absolute leadership of all Muslims, the majority party, the Sunnis, consider Ali to be only one of the caliphs appointed to head the Muslim community, one meant to be guided by the Sunnah, or example of the Prophet. Understanding Pakistan's history provides a foundation for exploring its rich cultural heritage. The history of Pakistan can be traced back 5,000 years to the Indus Valley Civilization, known for its advanced urban planning. Despite the emergence of small principalities in the region, there was no powerful unifying force until the Persian Empire annexed Gandhara in the 6th century BC. Subsequently, the Arab conquest led by Muhammad bin Qasim in AD 711 brought Sindh under Arab control. The Mughal Empire, established in the 16th century, united the subcontinent and left a lasting cultural impact. The Mughal Empire, renowned for its artistic achievements, was founded by Zahiruddin Muhammad Babur in the early 16th century. The empire reached its peak in the 16th and 17th centuries, ruling over a vast population. Meanwhile, European powers such as the Portuguese and Dutch were expanding their influence globally. The arrival of the British in the subcontinent marked a significant turning point. Initially, British merchants sought trade, but the French arrival led to military conflicts on Indian soil. Through alliances and military prowess, the British gradually gained control over various regions. As the Mughal Empire declined, British influence increased. The British East India Company, initially involved in trade, became a militarized force. 
the Battle of Plassey in 1757 showcased the British military's efficiency. Over time, the British annexed states and established their authority, with Bengal, Bihar, Orissa, and territories north of the Ganges falling under British control. The British also focused on the strategic importance of the northwest frontier, seeking to counter Russian advancements in Central Asia. Afghanistan became a buffer state, and the British determined the future of what is now Pakistan. Pakistan came into existence during the partition of British India in 1947. The All India Muslim League, led by Muhammad Ali Jinnah, advocated for a separate country to safeguard the interests of India's Muslims. Pakistan initially consisted of two regions, West Pakistan and East Pakistan. In 1971, East Pakistan declared independence and became the independent country of Bangladesh. Pakistani cuisine is a delightful fusion of various influences, resulting in a diverse and flavorful culinary experience. While it shares similarities with Indian cuisine, Pakistani dishes have their own distinct characteristics. One notable difference is that Pakistani food is generally less spicy than traditional Indian fare. The culinary heritage of Pakistan is deeply rooted in Indo-Muslim cooking, which originated in the Mughal courts of northern India. This style of cooking incorporates a blend of exotic herbs and spices, such as saffron, cardamom, sesame seeds, and poppy seeds. The aim is to create a harmonious combination of flavors, with an emphasis on subtle and nuanced tastes. A typical Pakistani menu often features a variety of meat and poultry dishes served in flavorful sauces. Many dishes have the term Mughlai attached to their names indicating their aristocratic origins and association with the Indo-Muslim cooking tradition. Other dishes are named after specific cooking methods such as buna gosht, which means meat sautéed with spices, or makli kasalan, which means fish curry. One of Pakistan's most renowned culinary contributions is tandoori chicken. This dish involves marinating chicken quarters and barbecuing them in a tandoor, a traditional clay oven. Tikka kebabs made from marinated cubes of chicken, mutton, fish, or prawns are also popular and come in a wide range of variations. Sikh kebabs, which are sausage-shaped tubes of minced meat cooked in a tandoor or on a barbecue skewer, are another beloved option. Shami kebabs, meat rissoles with a mixture of finely chopped onions, mint, coriander, and lemon juice, are convenient to carry and enjoy. Overall, Pakistan offers a culinary adventure for those willing to explore its diverse flavors and taste sensations. When visiting the country, don't miss the opportunity to indulge in these delicious and distinctive dishes. Pakistan has not always enjoyed the best media image abroad. Decades of stern travel advisories issued by foreign governments have tended to give a skewed impression of the situation on the ground. But anyone visiting the country for the first time will be blown away by the warmth and kindness of Pakistanis. The friendly welcome is one of the joys of coming here. And despite the continued presence of Islamist and separatist militants, statistics show that the country is an extremely safe place to travel. Guests are prized and protected, not threatened. Note the warnings by all means, but also enjoy the hospitality. If you want to make friend with Pakistani, highly recommend you can play one sport with them the cricket. When it comes to cricket, Pakistanis are fanatical. With an almost obsessive undercurrent pervading the country, bolstered by the hero worship of players like Imran Khan, even in the most rural areas of Pakistan, young men follow the cricket news avidly, buying rusty radios from bazaars and crouching around to listen to the commentary. Game day in Lahore is a riotous affair. There is not a single boy in the entire cricket ground, and probably in the whole of Pakistan, who does not yearn to be one of the country's budding cricket stars. Each and every one of them is dreaming that. Someday, he might be a national hero playing on an international stage. Trucks and buses in Pakistan are not just modes of transportation. They are vibrant expressions of the country's street culture and artistic flair. In the past, when goods were transported through challenging routes, camels and donkeys adorned with colorful embroidered silks were used, accompanied by good luck charms for protection. Today, trucks have replaced animals as the primary means of transportation. But the tradition of decoration has evolved into a genuine form of native folk art. From the roof to the undercarriage, Pakistani trucks are adorned with enamel painted panels, but the true focal point of the design is the rear end. This is where the artist's imagination roams freely. 
Fierce animals may be juxtaposed with lush gardens featuring playful fountains. Peacocks dance on bright green lawns, while tanks and soldiers with guns create scenes reminiscent of children's toys. Curvaceous, dark-eyed beauties, majestic mountains, serene seascapes with lighthouses all find their place in the artwork. Urdu couplets or poetic verses can be found on the trucks, offering cheerful messages or cautionary warnings, such as beware of lawyers, doctors, and the wiles of the fair ones. The most ornate part of the truck is usually the front, which is shaped like a tiara and adorned with elaborate jewels. This decorative element adds a touch of grandeur and splendor to the vehicle. The fascination of Pakistan's railways lies not only in the landscapes through which they pass, but also in the stories behind their construction. The origin of railways in what was to become Pakistan is unusual in that very few lines were built primarily for the commercial purpose of linking centers of population and trade. The first railway line was constructed to reduce the journey time on the final stage of the long haul from Britain to Delhi and Calcutta. Many of the later lines were built for military purposes. It all began in 1855. During the British Raj when several railway companies started laying local rail tracks in several districts of Sindh and Punjab. So it can be said that the country's rail system started as a patchwork of local rail lines, constructed and operated by small-scale private railway companies of that time, which include the Sindh Railway, Punjab Railway, Delhi Railway, and Indus Flotilla. However, most of these companies merged and formed the Northwestern State Railway in the year 1880. However, up till 1947, the year of independence, the network of the Northwestern State Railway expanded throughout Sindh and Punjab. After the independence, around 8,122 kilometers of train tracks of the Northwestern State Railway came under Pakistani territories. Initially, the system of railways in Pakistan was totally based on narrow-gauge train tracks. The process of the conversion of these narrow-gauge railway tracks into broad-gauge railway tracks has been carried out from time to time throughout the history of railways in Pakistan. Some of the many large-scale extension projects on the country's railway system were carried out from the 1950s to the 1980s. As of now, all of the narrow-gauge railway tracks have either been dismantled or converted into broad-gauge railway tracks for a smoother flow of railways traffic in Pakistan. The history of railways in Pakistan has been preserved and put on display in the railway museums found in different cities across the country. Islamabad, the capital city of Pakistan, offers broad avenues, pleasant shopping centers, and parks. In contrast, Rawalpindi is known for its maze-like bazaars. Both cities are conveniently located near the Murray Hills and the Gallus, providing a delightful excursion to the north. The development of Islamabad began in 1961 as a replacement for Karachi as the capital of Pakistan. Situated in the northern part of Punjab province on the Patwar Plateau beneath the Margala Hills, the city is still a work in progress, with new additions being made continuously. The decision to establish Islamabad in a new location was influenced by its convenient proximity to the Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa provinces and its healthy climate. The name Islamabad reflects the Islamic ideology of Pakistan and translates to the abode of Islam. Islamabad is characterized by its modern planning, spaciousness, abundance of greenery, and leafy surroundings. The city's wide roads, Detached houses and gardens create a contrasting atmosphere compared to traditional Pakistani cities. Rawalpindi, Islamabad's twin city, stands in contrast with its crowded streets, narrow winding bazaars, and ancient buildings clustered together. In the commercial district known as the Blue Area, Islamabad features a skyline of high-rise offices, with the most recent addition being the Centaurus, a complex designed by Atkins, the same architectural firm behind Dubai's Burj Al Arab Jumeirah. Other large-scale projects, such as Capital Smart City and Baria Town, are also underway in the southern part of the city. Peshawar's Old City is a vibrant and captivating place, characterized by its colorful bazaars that exude the essence of the East. Exploring the labyrinthine streets of the Old City is a must-do experience, immersing visitors in the rich cultural tapestry of the region. However, Peshawar has more to offer beyond its historic core. The cantonment and university areas are worth a visit as is the famous Khyber Pass. Peshawar holds a significant place in history, as it has been visited by notable figures such as Alexander the Great, Marco Polo, Mughal emperors Baber and Akbar, Queen Elizabeth II of England, and even Lawrence of Arabia. 
As the capital and largest city of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, it is known to the local Pathan population as Sher, meaning the city. Peshawar has long been a crucial hub for travel and trade, serving as the gateway to Central Asia. Its destiny has been intertwined with events and people from Afghanistan and beyond, in addition to its connection with South Asia. The city's population is a diverse mix of Pathans, Afghans, and various other ethnic groups, each contributing to the linguistic and cultural mosaic of the city. Unfortunately, Peshawar's proximity to the events in Afghanistan has had a negative impact on its once thriving tourism industry. Nevertheless, Peshawar remains an immensely fascinating and welcoming place, with hopes that the resilience of its people will lead to a revival of tourism. Recent restoration projects have aimed to enhance the appeal of the old city, and discussions are underway to reopen the region's forts and restore the historic railway to the Khyber Pass. Exploring the little streets on the west side of Peshawar's old city will lead you to the Cloth Market, followed by Kisa Kwani, known as the Street of the Storytellers. This bustling thoroughfare has earned the nickname Piccadilly of Central Asia due to its lively atmosphere and diverse range of people. The street's name derives from the tradition of travelers stopping by to drink tea and share stories in the bazaar. While some of the old tea shops have disappeared over time, a few brass and copperware shops continue to uphold the craft. Continuing along Kisakwani Bazaar, you will encounter shops selling striped handloom blankets from Swat and the Kaghan Valley. Beyond that, you'll find the bird market, where partridges, quails, parrots, doves, and songbirds are sold in tiny cages. The fruit bazaar seamlessly transitions into Chauk Yadgar as you round the corner. If you take a right turn and follow Kisakwani, you will eventually return to the Khyber Bazaar, completing your journey through Peshawar's bustling markets. Taktibahi, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, stands out among the numerous Buddhist monasteries scattered throughout Gandhara as the most impressive and visually stunning. Its reputation is built on a combination of exceptional preservation and meticulous restoration, as well as its magnificent location. Situated on the northern slopes of a rocky spur, elevated 150 meters above the plains, Takte Bahi is located approximately three kilometers east of the town that shares its name. The town is positioned along the Peshawar Swat Road, south of the Malakand Pass. The first systematic excavations at Taktibahi were conducted by D.B. Spooner on behalf of the Archaeological Survey of India between 1907 and 1911. This was followed by further excavations carried out by H. Hargreaves from 1910 to 1913. Unfortunately, the results of these excavations were not properly coordinated, resulting in the absence of a well-established stratigraphical sequence for the site. However, it is believed that the monastery itself was established in the first century BC and thrived during the reign of Kanishka, during which the court of many stupas was added. The main stupa and the assembly hall likely date from the third and fourth centuries AD, while the court of three stupas, the low-level chambers, and the open courtyard are thought to have been constructed in the fifth, sixth, or even seventh century. Despite the lack of a definitive sequence, the overall history and development of Taktebahi showcase different architectural elements and periods spanning several centuries. The site's significance lies in its historical and cultural value, attracting visitors with its remarkable blend of ancient structures and serene surroundings. Lahore's old city is a captivating maze of bazaars, while its iconic fort showcases the grandeur of Mughal architecture. However, Lahore is not just steeped in history. It also boasts a modern side. The city offers a range of attractions, including the magnificent Badshahi Mosque, Lahore Museum, and the Royal Trail. As the capital of Punjab, Lahore is widely recognized as the cultural capital of Pakistan. Throughout history, it has been a center of art, literature, music, food, education, and publishing. Known as the City of Gardens, Lahore features numerous green spaces scattered throughout its center and leafy suburbs, as well as a wealth of Sufi shrines and impressive Mughal monuments. The city's streets remain vibrant beneath its modern elevated metro system. However, these days, one can easily find themselves lost in the flashy mega malls that have emerged alongside the crowded bazaars of the legendary fortified old city. Lahore's roots can be traced back to ancient times. According to legend, it was founded by Lo, the son of Rama, the hero of the Hindu epic Ramayana. Others believe that the name Lahore means fort as strong as iron or Lohawar, 
Muslim rule in Lahore began with Qutbuddin Aibak, who was crowned there in 1206, becoming the first Muslim sultan of the Indian subcontinent. The city experienced its true heyday during the Mughal period, with each of the great Mughal emperors leaving behind magnificent monuments that still stand today. One such example is the Grand Badshahi Mosque, commissioned by Aurangzeb. In the 18th century, as Mughal power declined following Aurangzeb's death, Lahore faced constant invasions and became a province of the crumbling Mughal Empire. The city witnessed periods of chaos and underwent nine changes of governor between 1745 and 1756. In this state of disarray, warring Sikh factions gained control in some areas. Eventually, the population of Lahore invited Ranjit Singh to invade, and in 1799, he captured the city, marking a significant conquest on his path to establishing the Sikh Empire. Lahore's rich history, cultural heritage, and architectural treasures make it a city of immense significance in Pakistan. Its blend of ancient and modern attractions continues to allure visitors from around the world. Anyways, due to the limitations of the video, I can only provide you with a brief overview of Pakistan. However, I can assure you that it is a truly remarkable country that you should definitely consider visiting at least once in your lifetime. If you have any questions regarding traveling in this amazing country, or if you would like to learn more about specific locations within Pakistan or other countries, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I will try to make a video for you guys with my team. If you found this video interesting and helpful, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Your support motivates us to continue creating content for this channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.